Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jia Chun Wu. I'm very honored to have received the Samsung uh, Research of AI Research of the Year Award. I'm a new assistant professor at Stanford University who have just started in July this year. And excited to be here and to talk about my research. My research is, uh, the title of the talk is Learning to See the Physical World. So we humans live in the physical world. As humans, we effortlessly see the world, navigate in the world, and interact with the objects in the physical world. So as AI researchers, we want to build AI and machines that can replicate such abilities. So to do that, let's first look at what humans can do. But in the case of a very simple game, the popular game, that is the game of Jenga. And this is a six-month-old baby playing the game of Jenga. Looking at what the baby is doing, um, she's able to play the game in a different way. Although not playing the game the way that we expect, you can see from this video that this six-month-old baby has an amazing ability to recognize what's in the scene, to pick up the objects, you know, segment the objects, find the blocks, pick up the pick up the blocks, interact with it. And this is the theme of my research, and so that's why I sometimes call it the infant machine. That is, can we build a machine that learn and behave like an infant to, for any new objects, including objects we've seen, like blocks, but, you know, for a young child, and we have never seen objects like this. So for any new objects, including those we have never seen before, can we recognize its shape, geometry, and physics, predicting how it will behave if we interact with it, and to actually interact with it? So this is the theme of my research. So how to do that? Well, of course, we can try to use now this very popular deep networks, and you can see you know, in scenes like this, the networks does really well in segmenting objects like cars and roads. On the other hand, such kind of approach, if we directly try to scale it up to not only recognize objects like cars, but also to unseen objects, to object geometry, to object physics, then we have a challenge, because by relying on data, how can we really scale it up to collect annotations that are beyond object semantics like cars? Now, if we want to annotate the geometry of the object, if we want to annotate the physical properties of the object, that just seems very hard and it's almost impossible to collect such annotations to train the big problems. So the alternative approach is we can try to think about we are living in this physical world, then there's physics governing us, and so what's the physical model behind it? For an image like this with a few blocks, we understand that there is underlying physical states, which includes object geometry, physics, intrinsics, their extrinsics like positions, and scene descriptions like lines and camera plans. And our goal here is, you know, how can we really turn these states like object intrinsics and extrinsics into images? And this is the physical model behind what we see. And it's an important subject in computer graphics called rendering. Beyond a single frame, you can do that for multiple frames. Across the frames, there is dynamics for it. Condition on the current state, condition on actions, and what's going to happen in the future. In a video like this, uh, the actions you can see is, uh, you can assume it's like gravity. Right, so this kind of modeling approach is trying to understand what's the physical model behind the physical world and to use it uh, for us to understand the scenes, for scene understanding. But such a model also has other challenges. For example, uh, the biggest challenge is probably once we have this top-down model, right, when we understand object geometry and physics, we can imagine how the scene will look like. But if we want to solve a bottom-up inference problem, if we're not given the scenes, how can we really infer the geometries? But right, this is an un unsolved problem. And traditional approaches like sampling, MCMC, is just way very too slow to be practically useful. And second, models are always approximate. So they're not good enough to capture every details of the world. So the theme of my research, or the philosophy behind my research, is to integrate the two, to combine learning with modeling, so that you get a power of both the data and the model. And concretely, we have two themes of research. One is learning to invert. That is, as we said, you know, how can we really use top-down models for bottom-up inference? And our solution is to learning to use it, to learn to invert the physical model, but take the intermediate representations, or take the target from the physical model, as our training target, as our intermediate representations of training. The other is learning to augment. As we said, models are only approximate, not capturing the details in the world, maybe too deterministic. So can we use learning to augment it to make it more accurate, more efficient, to uh, able to handle uncertainties? So putting them together, the key principles behind my research is to build physical models for these physical worlds, 
and to think about what the model doesn't give us and see if we can use learning to, to help us to solve the problem. So now let's look at some concrete examples about how learning can be integrated with physical models. Uh, here is an example where we look at a simple task. Uh, if we are given an image, a 2D image with only a single object, can we infer the 3D geometry right, of that seeing object shape? So if we want to learn to invert a physical model, let's first look at what's the physical model in this case. Here you have a 3D shape, and again, this is a very simplified setting. You have a 3D shape, and you let's think about how the image is formed given that 3D shape. So you put a 3D shape in a 3D space, and there's a light source. And the light source sends out rays to the object, it hits the visible surface of the object, it gets reflected into the camera. In front of the camera, there's an image plane. And this is, you know, from the image plane, you actually see the object. So we are essentially seeing about object geometry is actually the visible surface. But in this case, uh, you know, you only see the three legs of the chair, you're not seeing the fourth leg because it's occluded. And we know that the chair has four legs because we have a prior knowledge. The chairs must be stable, so it must have four legs. But all you can see from the image is the visible surface, which shows chairs has a back, has a bottom, but only has three legs. And we're using our prior knowledge to imagine the three legs. So accordingly, if we want to invert this physical model, maybe we can design a system, but also you know, it's for shape estimation in two steps. The first step is to do depth estimation. That is, we go from a color image, but you estimate the depth of that thing. For a depth map, you can see it as a reparameterization of the visible surface. That every pixel on the depth map corresponds to a point on the surface. And second, you're doing shape completion. You're going from this visible surface or the partial surface to complete the shape. But for this part, the image is no longer being helpful because there's no more information you can get from the image about object geometry. And all you can do is to use your prior knowledge, use machine learning to help you to complete the shapes. Because you, you have seen many, many chairs, they're all stable, they all have four legs. So you learn this knowledge that chairs must be stable and use the knowledge to complete the shape. Okay. So in this case, you can see the depth map or visual surface is an important intermediate representation that we take from the physical model and condition on the depth map the input RGB image and output 3D shape actually becomes conditional. So following this philosophy, we design a system that has two new steps. Both are neural networks, but the first neural network estimates the depth from the color image, and the second neural network computes the shape, output the 3D shape geometry from the depth. And compared with the end-to-end -end approach that only has a single neural network that outputs shape directly from the image, uh, if we test it on images like this, which you can see is a kind of a pretty actually challenging and unusual chair, uh, direct output without modeling depths, this is what you get. But by modeling depths, you can see the output just becomes much more accurate and really enforces the system to care more about object surfaces, which is really what matters to our perception of the reconstruction type. And here's another example where you can see that the geometry has also been much better uh, by modeling depths. Okay, so this is like one simple idea of how the intermediate representations can help us do better in reconstruction. But as we said before, we want to generalize to new objects, objects you've never seen before. How would such a system generalize? If we try to train it on object classes like chairs, planes, and cars, and then we test it on the table, and this is what you get. You send it to a network, and this is the output of the system. Does it look like a table? Well, I would say it looks much more like an airplane. It does a little bit look like a table because it shares the top of the table. But why did this happen? Because when the system is given a table, it's like, I've never seen this before. I don't know what that is. But the top of the table does look like it's round, does look like some of the airplanes I've seen. It's thin and round. So why do I just try to retrieve an airplane? Essentially, the system hasn't learned what shape completion means. Instead, it's just trying to retrieve smart shape from the trees at the nearest stadium. This is not only a problem for our approach, but it has been a common problem for the general literature. There are a lot of work in this direction, and we also perform this problem. So how to build a system that generalizes to even objects from NC object categories? Again, we're going back to the idea of looking into the physical model and seeing how we may use learning to invert the physical model. If we look a little deeper into the second part of the system, you know, projecting depths, we are here projecting a 2D depth map back into a 3D, as we said before, visible surface. So essentially, you're still doing this 2D depth map to 3D visible surface back projection. And this is a deterministic and fully differentiable process. And if this is differentiable, deterministic, and something that we can write it down as mathematical equations, 
why would we have this uh, shape completion network, the second stage of the system, to be over prioritized and to relearn this thing while we already completely can has has understood it and can write it down? And it's so universal that every image is the result of a protection model. So it's universal rules that we already know about. So our solution is instead of having a system to be over prioritized and relearning back protection from 2D to 3D, what if we just build it into the system? So now the system first estimates the depth and then back protect it into a partial surface, as you can see here. Uh, now the surface is in 3D, but it's partial. It only has 3x. And then the second part of the system, shape estimation or shape completion, now can really focus on complete the shape using my prior knowledge that shares have four legs to complete the shape instead of relearning this back protection. So with this simple chain, now if we take the models chain on chairs, planes, and cars, and we test it on this table, this is what you get before, direct prediction. This is what you get by having depth and projection as an intermediate representation. Right now you can see the results are much better. And it really matches the input, uh, that it looks much more like, like a table. Remember again, this system has never seen a table. It has only seen chairs, planes, and cars. And this is our model called generalizable reconstruction that published, uh, uh, I think one and a half years ago at New Rips, uh, with leading also Shomi and Joe Tong, uh, my collaborators, PhD students at MIT. Okay. So we've seen how the system generalizes to, uh, tables here. Tables, but now let's try to uh, try on even more object classes, uh, bookshelves and sofas. Again, the system was only trained on chairs, planes, and cars. It has only seen chairs, planes, and cars, but now you can see how it performs on uh, bookshelves and sofas. On the right, there are some baselines, which you can see they're, they're doing okay, but not perfect. It's you know trying hard to approximate the bookshelf and the sofa, and this is the output of our system, Rara. Still, a lot of artifacts, a lot of a lot of places that we can improve, but it does approximate the input shape much better without seeing any bookshelves and sofas. And you can compare them with the ground trees as well. And here we try something that's even crazier. What if we just test it on non-rigid objects like human bodies and horses, while has while the system has only seen chairs, planes, and cars? And this is what you get. Compare them, compare them with the ground trees. Although you can still see all the bumpiness and imperfections, but it's, to me, it's quite impressive that systems are able to learn that surfaces must be complete and shapes must be complete to reconstruct objects like, surf, uh, like humans and horses with only seeing chairs, planes, and cars. Okay, so now we have shown important representations in computer graphics, especially two and a half D surfaces, like the depth map, visible surfaces, can serve as intermediate representations together with projection to help us build a learning system that is much more generalizable and also performing better. This is learning to invert. So on the other hand, we also want to see how this Q and happy surfaces can be a useful intermediate representations for augmentation. What does that mean? If we have a traditional graphics engine, given a shape, texture, I can then repeat. But what if I want to generate objects that I've never seen before or paint it with textures I've never seen before? So here we use a generative uh, neural network called generative adversarial network uh, to synthesizing the novel C shapes. And this is kind of a pretty common or popular technique that generative adversarial networks. But what's important here is now we can still do projection, but we do it in the other direction. We do a formal projection, we take the generated 3D shape and project it into tree and happy surface. That is depth map, as we said before. And we can apply a 2D texture network then we just paint the textures directly on the suit image by translating the depths into an output a color RGB image. This allows us to not only generate 3D shapes inside novel objects shapes, but also uh, generate 2D pictures of these objects with corresponding textures. Such a disentangled representation also allows you to, for example, synthesizing 3D shapes and then take uh, textures from images that look like that I really like. I'm like, oh, these pictures has very nice cars, but how will the textures of these cars look like if I apply them on shapes of other cars I just synthesized? And this is what you can get. Right? By having this kind of a hybrid or augmented graphics engine, now you're augmenting the physical model projection depths with your learning system to synthesizing new shapes, or also to synthesizing new textures. So this is the power of learning to augment a graphics engine. And of course, we can put them together by Given a scene of multiple objects, we can first try to invert it uh, using a slightly, I would say, uh, updated version of our system that presented earlier. 
But to first invert it, recognize the object geometry, recognize their poles and texture. And then I'll, I'll be like, now I have this semi interpretable representations and objects, you know, cars are at the center. What if, how does it look like if I move the object to the right? I can directly edit these representations and then put the edited representation back into my augmented physical model, the graphics engine, and to re-render how the scene will look like with everything else stay the same, with the only exception that the objects, the position of the, of the objects have been changed and now the cars are on the right. Okay, so this is the power of integrating learning to invert the physical model graphics engine and to augment the physical model of graphics engine. And this is what we can do in image understanding and in C understanding and C manipulation. And the world is not only static, right? Uh, we also understand, like in this tower, it seems like the blocks are going to fall. So how to capture dynamics? And the most straightforward idea is probably just to do inverting graphics engines and take the output of the graphics and directly send it into the dynamic system, predicting or simulate what's going to happen in physical simulation and re-render what's going to happen in the future. Turns out this kind of simple idea could be actually very helpful. You know, given an image like this, I can reconstruct the um, you know, inferring object geometry texture positions, reconstruct the scene, and predict what's going to happen if you know, there's wind coming from the right or if I push the object. Or if I'm seeing a tower of, of, a, of a blocks that are already falling, I can also plan accordingly right? how to, what's the stabilizing force I can put to stop object tower from falling. And we also even tried uh, to deploy on a real robot. So given a scene like this, if I want to reproduce or rebuild this bridge or a tower, what do I need to know? I have to understand the remote objects, seven blocks. They have different sizes. They have different colors. I have to understand there is physics. So if I want to rebuild the tower, I have to start from the bottom. So we actually try and deploy our system on a real robot. And the robot is actually able to recreate a tower or bridge like this. And here are more examples, like 10 different trials. And as you can see, uh, the system is not 100% accurate, uh, you know, because especially going from a single image, right? Everything here is from single image, the estimated depth, the distance of the rocks is challenged. But you can see in most cases, uh, seven of the 10 cases, the robot was able to recreate a tower or bridge from just a single image. Okay, uh, we said we want to use learning to help dynamic models. Before we said learning can be used to invert and augment a graphics engine. And for dynamics models, the idea is the same. You know, if we just directly apply a dynamics model, then there are a lot of things that are missing. For example, if I'm seeing, showing you two objects here, and they look almost identical, but if I put them into the same external force, like there's external object hitting it, the outcomes are very different. Why is that? This is because the top object is made of aluminum, which is much lighter than the bottom object, where the top block is made of steel, which is much heavier. So physical properties really affect your dynamics models. And you probably want to use learning to invert the dynamics models to not only understand object geometry, but also understand the physical properties. Also, if I'm giving an object like this and I try to push it multiple times, even if, if my force is from the same direction, and my force identity and the, the magnitude and direction is identical. But you can see that the outcomes are stochastic. Right? This is because the world and there are all those details which are really hard to model, microsurface, microfriction, and these will all lead to changes in the outcome of dynamics. So in practice, it's really a stochastic process. And but any physics engine or any dynamics model you use off the shelf is usually deterministic. This shows you'll probably also want to use learning, not only to invert the dynamics model to estimate physical properties, but also to augment the dynamic model to make them stochastic. Uh, due to time constraint, I won't talk uh, in detail about any of these papers, but I'm happy to you know, share with you afterwards offline. Learning also can help us to learn dynamics models, applying them on scenes that we cannot typically do. Here is an example where we try to learn a dynamics model not only between rigid objects, actually between collection of particles using a hierarchical dynamics graph networks. And by doing that, you will see that the learned system can actually not only simulate how rigid objects interacting with each other, but also how fluid they interact with rigid objects. This is another aspect where learning can be used to augment the dynamics model. Okay, to summarize, so my research is about unit learning to invert, you know, like 
if I don't know how to use the top-down models for bottom line inference, I can use learning to invert these physical models for efficient inference. I can use learning to augment approximate dynamics models or graphics engines to make them better, more efficient, and able to handle uncertainty. And to summarize, again, we really want to think about what's the physical model behind the physical world if we want to deploy or build AI system for the physical world. We also have to be very careful here. Because in the, from history, we have learned decades ago that if you're building things that are too much, that are too restrictive, that are not universal, it really eventually hurts your system's ability in generalizing in the real world. But here, what we are trying to build is really the minimal structure, but also the most universal structure, right? Projection. Every image you're seeing in 2D is an outcome of a projection from 3D structure. So building that in doesn't really help you, but it doesn't really hurt you. But the universal structure really allows or help your system to generalize much better. So this is what we want to think about. What's the minimal physical structure for the physical world? And to build them into a learning system and use your learning system to learn whatever the model doesn't do. Thank you very much.